the old AM antenna it seems to be working well even at this level you know we got a lot of stations I pull in a uh, shortwave and uh, AM broadcast all right what we're gonna do is we need to get it up higher now but I need to do some preparations I have to do something to the bottom I've got to do something to the top I have to do something to the cable the you know the, uh, the RG6 anyway I'm going to try, I don't want this thing to go to the very tippy top of the tree. There's just too much swaying goes on. So what we're going to do is get it up to about right in that area right there. It's about, what oh, would that be about, maybe, maybe seven-eighths of the way up. So let's get this thing down and start doing some things to it. Maybe. I want everybody to meet the newest member of our family, at least temporarily. His name is Rusty. He's a little chihuahua. The other day we took our pooches down to McDonald's for their ice cream treat and while we were there this poor little thing was wandering around in the parking lot trying to get in everybody's car somehow he got out of someone's car or got dropped off I don't think he got dropped off he's pretty well taken care of he's his coat was nice he's got plenty of weight very friendly little thing anyway I couldn't let him wander around the parking lot anymore and uh, take a chance of getting getting run over <clears throat> So he was really thirsty. His tongue was hanging out to his, to his teeth there, to his uh, feet, and uh, we decided to go ahead and bring him home. And so until we can find his owner, we checked with the local motel, we checked with McDonald's, we checked with the local garage. You know, maybe someone driving through. He got out of the car, and they didn't have time to go chasing him down. You never know. Anyway, we've named him Rusty, and uh, he's a friendly little thing. He fit right in around here. But I'll tell you, we really don't need four dogs. Mm -mm -mm, three is plenty. We had only initially decided to have two. One for me and one for wifey. He's a cute little thing. He's only about three, maybe four months old. Can't be that old. Well, she's down. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rough up with sandpaper all the way around that nut. Get it as close to the nut as I can. Make it look pretty rough. Then we're going to take a little bit of, you know, 5-minute epoxy gel. And we're going to put a nice gob of it around there and also up on top of the nut where the, th where the uh, threaded eye bolt goes through it. Alright, I am gobbing this uh, epoxy gel down in there. Squeezing it up underneath that bolt. I want to get as much as I can under there. It does not have to look pretty. It has to be effective, though. If it's not effective, I'll be wasting my time. I want to really get that glue up under there. Looks like I didn't quite mix up enough. I need to put some down in there also, around that nut. Anyway, take your time. As long as it lasts, you know, five, six years up in a tree, we'll be pretty lucky, actually, because usually things don't last that long. <laughs> if we can get five or six years out of this, we'll be in good shape. The next thing I'm going to do is take some electrical tape. I'm going to tape it around and around and around here several times where that connector, where, uh, where the uh, F connector, male and female, come together. So let's do that. The reason I'm doing it this way is if I start slopping a bunch of goo and crap on the threads of that, uh, you know, two connectors there, and if I ever have to take the antenna off, it'll, it'll just be a mess trying to get it off. Better to just go ahead and cover it with electrical tape, then put my sloppy gooey mess over the top of it. That way, <laughs> that way the threads and the connector are protected, but we still get good waterproofing and stuff like that. One more thing, it does not matter how much electrical tape you use, it's up to you. You can use a whole roll if you want. Just remember, if you ever have to take it apart, it's going to take you forever to unwind it. But so what? You know, we got nothing but time when it comes to our hobbies. Now, there we go. Now we'll take some of this here liquid tape. We'll start covering that up, see? That's the way you do it. Cover the tape instead of the connector. And again, it does not have to be pretty. You're looking for effectiveness here. You know? You want, you want to do pretty? Become a clothing designer. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Get that thing looking real watertight all the way down. The last thing I want to do is, while this is drying here, I want to create a drip loop and a strain relief. And we're going to do that by running the cable up alongside, bending it around a little bit, and taping it to the side of the tube. That way, when you know, I just don't want a lot of weight of cable 
hanging off of this here. I want the weight to come from another, you know, another spot, a strain relief. You'll see. That's the uh, that's the first part of it. Now we're going to fold it over and tape it a second time. Well, there's that. I used I used a lot of tape on it because I wanted to have strength. And the weakest part of this entire thing right here is the very top edge around here. Because water will be continually running down every time it rains and snows. It's going to run down. It's easy, eventually it's going to eat away at this edge right here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put a little more. We're going to kind of help it. You know, give it a little extra waterproofing here. And again, the old liquid tape is going to help us do that. We're going to go ahead and put us a nice coat of it all the way around. Seal it up good. Last but not least, uh, these two cables here will pull against the edge of this tape. Okay, it'll pull and it'll eventually rip it. So we're going to put a couple of nice sturdy plastic ties on there. I'm going to tighten this up so it'll t clamp it right against the tube. And there it is. And you know, it probably wouldn't even hurt to put a little tape over the top of that. I think I will. I love overkill. All right, that should do it. You know, the other day I was talking to one of our, our my fellow ham uh, operators at a luncheon, and he installs cable. Uh, he's been doing it for years for uh, TV and all kinds of stuff for a local cable outfit in town here. And he told me, he says, you know, we got talking about the use of electrical tape. He said, you know, years ago they used a lot of electrical tape to tape this and tape that, tape this and tape. He said, now we've got, you know, better, better kinds of uh, ways of doing things. But he said, you know, every time I run into one of the old uh, ways they did it with the electrical tape, he said, it had been up there for years and years. And he said it was still almost as good as the day they put it up. He said, this stuff is amazing. He said, it just holds up for years and years. And the last thing we're going to do before putting it up in the tree, I know some of you said, oh, he forgot to seal this little seam. No, I did not. I'm using silicone on it. Okay, because I may have to take it off someday. I don't want that thing cemented on there. We'll seal it all the way around with a nice thick coat of silicone. Here's the idea for getting the antenna up in the tree. I used to have a, a large nut, that, but I can't figure out where it went. You'd think something that big on my workbench would be easy to find, but I, it's up there somewhere. I can't find it, so we're going to have to not stop the show for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a socket. I have a socket tied to uh, some filament line on this fish pole, but I am not going to use the fish pole. Let me get this thing over here. There we go. I'm not going to use the fish pole. To toss the socket up into the tree, yeah, it, it would wind up, you know, going over the top of the tree. I don't want to do that. I want to go up through the center of the tree, and then have it come down that way. So how do we do it? Well, we do it with a slingshot. Yes, a slingshot. I'm going to shoot that thing right up through those trees right there boy it's difficult to see right in there right in there right through there so it'll go through there and then come down on the other side once it comes down on the other side i will fasten some nylon coated uh, i'll cut the i'll cut the fish line and tie some nylon coated clothesline to it and pull the clothesline back up over this way then tie it to the antenna and haul it back up using the clothesline on the other side of the tree to haul it back up. So let's see how this operation is going to work. <laughs> oh, by the way, wifey gets to hold the fish pole. That ought to be fun. <laughs> All right, here's our hanging socket. I got it on the first shot. I couldn't believe it. I went exactly where I wanted it to go. It is now up over the top of the tree, hanging down, and uh, I've got to tie the the clothesline rope to it and get it back up over the other way. Now I could tie a little loop like that and then tie it to the uh, fish line and then you know tape it tape it up and uh, with some tape and then pull it up through the trees but it wouldn't make it. The knot always catches. I don't care how small you make that knot it's going to catch and you'll never get it loose and then you'll wind up usually in my case breaking the fish line. So let's try something else. This is the way I do it. I've had much better luck putting the fish line parallel right up against the uh, clothesline rope and then taping it around there with some electrical tape. And it makes it nice and pointy on the end and it will slither a whole lot easier 
up through those tree limbs. You got to kind of straighten it out the best you can. And uh, you know, a nice gentle pull on the fish line. I'll be over there gently pulling it, and Wifey will be picking up the clothesline, taking the uh, the tension off as I pull. And uh, let's see how that works. It worked perfectly. This is the end, all the way up through the tree, way up there. And there's the other one, and uh, waiting out there, waiting for me to pull it. So now all we have to do is tie it real good to this little booger right here and uh, tape it with some more electrical tape and then just haul her up and then we'll see how it works tonight well, here she goes i'm gonna start pulling her up let me get another hand hold here she's going up I'm gonna take two hands <laughs> well there it is way up there way up there it's about three times higher than it was before and I've got it tied off around Mr. Treeface here. <laughs> I just got her tied around the tree. She's going to hold her. Now I need to pick up the slack on the rest of this uh, coax cable and get it underneath the house. I got quite a bit over here I'm going to have to tighten up. I've got the antenna hooked to the old hammerl in here. Let's just go through the dial on the broadcast band. Seems to be working pretty good. You don't even know him. You don't even know him. The entire Middle East. And so, also, since the weather is picking up a lot of stations, of course, it's the hammer one now. That's, you know, that's like my primo radio. And an excellence in broadcasting network. of that trip had to do with being in one of the cars. Get one like that, but I think you can go back. Seems to be all five of us. Let's pull that down there. All right, let's try one of the, uh, let's try one of the shortwave bands here. Let's try uh, this one here, 18 to 31 megacycles. No, let's try 10 to 18 megacycles. Let's see what that does. All right, not bad, not bad. I'm happy with it. Now, the question is, is it any better than my street wire was? I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. It's hard to tell. I used to get fairly good reception on that street wire, but this one seems to be a lot clearer, not so much static, but you never know, you know. I, in my mind, it was worth the experiment. It was a lot of fun getting it done and getting it up in the tree. You know, if you want to build one, fine. If you don't, fine. You know, a street wire, maybe 100 feet long, probably do just as good. Well, that's going to wrap this one up. Nice experiment. I enjoyed it. Hope the rest of you, do, you know, did also. So until next time, in the next Mishmash video, I'm, I'm sorry this one was all about the antenna, but I wanted to get it out of the way. Until next time, this is John.